Can't decide in torn between a romantic, comedy, action, or an indie film to watch for the weekend? Well, well, well. Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast is your ultimate guide to the latest movies. Join us as we dissect the latest on the blockbusters. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast. GSMC Movie Podcast, brought to you by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Stacey. And I'm your co-host, Sarah. And today, we're somewhat going back to childhood. Yay! In that we're watching cartoons. Oh, good. And it is actually Saturday, though not morning, <laughs> when we're recording this. Oh, uh, but they don't watch... really have Saturday morning cartoons yeah. anymore. I mean, I'm sure they do, but you can watch cartoons anytime now. Yeah, I didn't actually watch Saturday morning cartoons. I watched cartoons that would have been someone's Saturday morning cartoons, <laughs> but they were reruns for me, and so they were like, you know, really random times, usually I wa- after school. Mm-hmm. Oh, we had after school. We had Flintstones and Jetsons after school. But... See, I also had Flintstones and Jetsons and Scooby-Doo and mm-hmm. Josie and the Pussycats and... Jabber Jaws and Speed Buggy. Oh my gosh, Tate was ju- my husband was just singing the Jabber Jaws song to me the other day. I don't even remember the Jabber Jaws song. Uh, I just remember Jabber Jaws. Tate, just ask him; he'll sing it for you. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm going back to my nostalgia childhood, and we need to stop because that's a totally long road we could go down. But we, that's not where we're at. Yeah, well, we did have Saturday morning cartoons and a black and white TV. It was a good time. That's sad, actually. Mm-hmm. It was just in cartoons and black and white. Yeah, the Smurfs were not blue. <gasps> Obviously, they were gray. Sacrilege. Yeah, I, I don't know. This is just going to make me sound... I don't even know what's going to make me sound like, but we didn't have central heat. <laughs> we had a wood stove, so my parents would tend to sleep in a little bit on Saturdays. So if we got up before my dad, who built the fire, then it would just be like me and my brother in a giant comforter wrapped up on the floor in the living room. And you were really excited when the Wells Fargo wagon came to town, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. This yeah, just sounds like we're I not know. in my my this century. My aunt used to joke that you can <laughs> you can fly to the border, but you got to take a stagecoach home. Oh, very very cute, and also kind of wow. I couldn't live then. But so. <laughs> and then being, I mean, this we're talking about the '80s here. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I've mentioned several times I don't like the '80s. The '80s are terrible, bored. It, it had yeah had nothing to do with being the '80s. So yeah, just Sarah's town. Sarah's childhood. Some interesting stories there, I'm sure. It was a good time. Mm -hmm. But so anyways, the two films we are doing today are Teen Titans Go! (laughs) to the movies. There is an exclamation point there, so I feel that's just how you have to pronounce that. I agree. I agree. And uh, The Breadwinner. And I watched The Breadwinner because I was going to watch Teen Titans, and I was like, cartoons! You're on my (laughs) queue for some reason. I don't remember why I put you here, but I'm going to watch a cartoon movie. So also cartoon movie. Let's Let's just get all the cartoons out of the way. Although they're bringing back just really random, they're bringing back Rugrats, and my childhood does not know how to deal, so. Yeah, see, I didn't watch Rugrats. I mean, I've seen it, but, yeah. That's awesome, and then didn't watch the older, and we're off topic, so let's get back. So, Teen Titans, go! To the movies. <laughs> <laughs> I know there was a TV show, but I was a little, I felt I was too old for cartoons mm. when Teen Titans originally started. Oh, silly Stacy. I know. Tricks are for kids. Um, so... I had to look this up. There were evidently two Teen Titans shows, okay. kind of. There was Teen Titans, and that was on for a few seasons, and people really liked that. And then it ended, I think, because it was only supposed to be a few seasons, not because it was like, oh, we don't want to do this anymore. And then they did Teen Titans Go!, which has the same voice actors, but a different animation style. And so I think it was aimed at a younger audience. Mm -hmm. And so this movie is based off of that second one, Teen Titans Go! Ah, see, now now that I'm looking it up, I mean, I I thought I had seen one of them, and I have seen the the second one with the different different animation. Yes. And so there are a couple of times in the film where the animation changes. At least one of those is sort of referencing the original Teen Titans, and the others are just, I'm not quite sure... Because I'm not sure how much of this is, hey, we did this for the movie, 
and how much of this is typical for Teen Titans. Mm. Because this is a rather somewhat irreverent film at times. The Teen oh, Titans. It's, yeah, what I've oh. seen of the cartoon, it's, it's fairly irreverent. They're very interesting. So this movie starts where there's a giant balloon person wreaking havoc on a city. <laughs> and I already went in feeling like I'm going to be too old for this movie. And then I immediately felt that way because my first thought is the physics of how a balloon is smashing buildings without like <laughs> popping <laughs> instead of, you know, anything else. <laughs> It was just oh, like, but Stacey. you're a balloon. I, but it's a cartoon. I mean, I don't know what you were. I, I can't believe you went in expecting any sort of like I accuracy. It. But I was just like, your first villain that you shows me show me is a giant balloon guy. Like, <laughs> I, I'm immediately like, but buildings and because he does, he goes around smashing a city. Okay, and the Teen Titans come out to stop him. But he doesn't know who he is. There's a lot of references to the Justice League repeatedly throughout this film. Oh, you're the just. Oh, are you like the Justice League Junior or some of the lesser known members? Who are you? He doesn't know who the Teen Titans are, so they decide to introduce themselves with a cool beats hip hop song <laughs> that they rap and dance to. Because, oh wow! Of course they do. Because why not? And while they're doing that, the actual Justice League comes and you know defeats the balloon monster because they're too busy doing their musical number <laughs> and they happen to mention oh we have to go we're going to batman's movie premiere because batman has a movie because it because seems batman all the always super- has a movie well yeah. it seems all the superheroes have a movie we even get that point when they're talking to the teen titans of like oh do you all have a movie and superman's yet like yes many with more to come and wonder woman's like it took a while but yes and green Lan- lantern's like i do but we don't talk about it <laughs> 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 and you do get that sometimes where there are some of the jokes that are clearly for kids. Like when they fight the balloon monster, there is a rather long fart farting joke. noise. <laughs> there is. I, was just, I, just, like, I didn't even have to guess. <sighs> I, I just knew that would be the and case. It, just, it goes on for a while and I'm just like, wow. Okay. This is the level of humor we're at. Okay. Oh, of course. But then you get the references like, there's a reference to the Green Lantern movie. There's a reference to um, Superman with Gene Hackman's real estate, which is <laughs> so wow. there's clearly yeah, some that kids are would also definitely not get that one. I right. don't think there's clearly some that are also for adults, and so it is. I don't know that it really maintains that balance super well, but I did like the ones that were not fart poop jokes that were yeah, more like you yeah. have to get this reference. I I actually ended up sitting next to a father with his two sons. Oh, and, and think, they were probably giggling hysterically. They were laughing at certain parts, and I was laughing at certain parts. And I just remember thinking, that kid probably thinks I'm crazy at the parts <laughs> I'm laughing at because he doesn't get them. Exactly. But I'm cracking up at certain things because, yeah. So in this, they decide, especially Robin, who's sort of the leader mm-hmm. of the Teen Titans. And yes. Robin's the only one who I even recognized before as a person because he's robin's batman batman's robin excuse me um but then there's also starfire who is from some other planet Mm -hmm. and tends to say the word the in front of things Mm -hmm. like i do not know why but she's like this film is really the awesome she essentially something like that yes yes i don't know what that is about her character because i don't watch the show but i'm just like what there is raven who uses dark magic or something Mm -hmm. there is beast boy who can turn into any animal and there is Cyborg, who is a cyborg, exactly as that sounds. <laughs> yes. And that is the Teen Titans, and they don't take things seriously, and like music numbers, evidently. Yes. Yes. That, that's pretty much what I got from the few minutes here and there I've watched mm-hmm. of the show. And, music numbers, especially? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, you know, I now realize that I have seen the regular Teen Titans also, because the hubby has watched both of them. I just, you know, come in and out of the you've seen the way i watch tv with my right. husband i love how it's <laughs> i i've seen part of it because my husband does for like every <laughs> pretty much everything yes yeah I, I, it's not that i hate t- i love movies that's the thing i used to watch movies all the time yes. and then last night i had my first like alone time in forever mm-hmm. and did i sit down and watch tv no i cleaned a closet right as one does <laughs> I mean, as as we all do at free yeah, time yeah right i don't know i think i've just gotten boring in my old age oh but so anyways back to the young people the cool hip young people with their music with their music so they go to the batman premiere where pretty much they the director is jade wilson and she's done a bunch of superhero movies so it seems everybody has a superhero movie including the challengers of the unknown which 
is a evidently a real thing from the comic books and b a running joke throughout this film because it's in their name the unknown how did they have a movie before the teen titans (laughs) robin decides and they keep getting told this he's just a sidekick the teen titans are just sidekicks because they don't have a movie so in order to be considered a real hero he needs to have a movie about him Uh, but in order to get a movie about him he needs to be a real hero (laughs) it's uh, it's a catch-22 so in order to be considered a real hero enough for a movie he decides he needs an arch nemesis and of course, so there sure. is this character slade who they really like the way how saying his name slade <laughs> comes up a number of times <laughs> who also running joke looks kind of like deadpool oh he doesn't with the colors but he does in that he's like got a mask and so his mouth doesn't move when he talks it's just slats oh right and he's got swords and <laughs> yeah i was like okay but i think it's interesting how many references there are to like deadpool and other disney owned properties in this film mm-hmm. because this is not a disney film right it's dc comics so you start getting a lot of like oh we're gonna reference marvel but we're not i'm just like um you keep comparing and i i just <laughs> what <laughs> stop comparing yourself to marvel because i already feel dc comics is like kind of losing this comic movie battle here right i don't need the the constant references to disney and or marvel right you don't need to keep pointing out your you know supposed or possibly yes. not supposed in- inadequacy well and i think that's that they're trying to do that and they're pointing out a lot of sort of ridiculous things about superhero genres about you know i have to have my arch there's a whole point when they find they're trying to convince slade to be their arch nemesis and he doesn't want to <laughs> and then they finally convince him and they're trying to catch him it's like you can't catch me that's not how arch nemesis work i have to get away so you can foil my plan next time it's just like why are we having this conversation <laughs> about what like really so they're clearly you know poking fun a bit but it was just like when you start poking fun at the you know slightly better superhero universe you, you lose. You just automatically lose that. So stick to poking fun at, like, regular pop culture. Then I'm good. Right, right. And they do do some breaking the fourth wall at times, along with the irreverence, when they are talking to Slade about, you know, you look like Deadpool. Cyborg goes up to him and is like, look into the camera and say something mildly inappropriate. <laughs> like, I love you. I need you all to just constantly keep making references that the children in this audience will not get, because that is what's going to carry me through this otherwise silly movie with poop and fart jokes. <laughs> There's thankfully not too many of those, but when they do make them, they just, they were like, this is great. We have to glory in this as long as possible. And sure. I'm just like, pass, move on. So anyways, in order to get his own movie, because he can't convince Slade to be his arch nemesis and because there's all these other superheroes, the director, being somewhat snide, says, I would only make a superhero movie about you guys if there were no other heroes. Oh, they decide oh, dear. that they need to go back in time and stop all the other heroes from <laughs> becoming heroes. But they're the sidekicks. Isn't that going to eliminate them? <sighs> no, it's so great. So they're not actually as far in. Again, I'm not a comic book person. So save for Robin. I don't know that any of them are directly sidekicks uh, okay. to anyone. And I'm not even sure how much Robin is a sidekick in this universe of Teen Titans because Batman doesn't really acknowledge him. Mm. in this film Mm -hmm. to the point that you're like i know from like you know the various iterations of batman that he's supposed to know who you are but does he know who you are in this film because he doesn't seem to act that way i don't i don't quite get it were you ever his sidekick (laughs) how are you here what is your background story because i don't understand (laughs) but so anyways that creates one of these and i'm amazed at like the rights they got properties to like even just name drop okay but also put in because in going back in time lots of references to back of the back to the future oh sure sure not only the name drop but also the music <laughs> nice like, i'm like how much did it cost you just like in rights to different properties for this film alone because i'm loving the things you actually paid to reference in this including a cameo that I thought couldn't possibly be the real cameo, but is the real cameo. I won't spoil who that is, but it's it's very interesting. Mm. See, but, now I'm intrigued. Yes. But so anyways, they do finally manage to get a movie, mostly about Robin. The other Teen Titans don't really care, but Robin's really upset, so they want to get a movie for Robin. But then it turns out that drives them apart, because Robin wants to be the movie star, and the other Teen Titans oh, of course. don't take things seriously 
And so they sort of split apart right as we get to the villainous moment. I will not spoil. But there is also a very awesome... In the same way that the Lego movie had Everything is Awesome, that song, Uh this movie has Upbeat, (laughs) which is a very 1980s style pop song about being upbeat. (laughs) It's just like, you're annoying, and yet I also really love that you're stuck in my head right now. The music scenes were all fantastic. I really like them, including the ridiculous Teen Titans introduce ourselves (laughs) song that we get. And I'm just, I'm like, wow, you all are taking yourself very seriously for this not at all serious song. I don't know what to do here. The rest of it, the villain was kind of obvious, but again, it's a kid's cartoon. Right. So we're not going for too much subtlety and we don't need to. Um, The voice cast is very interesting. Looking at the credits after the fact and who plays certain people, I don't actually recognize any of the main Titans. Mm Mm-hmm. Voices, although then looking them up, I see that some of them did do voices for like Rugrats and Powerpuff Girls. And I'm like, what? Right. What? My childhood again. But the side characters' voices and who plays who, I really like, especially knowing it after the fact. I'm just like, ah, oh, I can see that for some of you. Or, wow, that was that person? Totally didn't get. So. Okay, like who? I won't spoil. There would be spoilers for some of Okay. Those. Like, Patton Oswalt plays Adam, which is. I was amazed at that because his character is, I guess he's supposed to be like DC ver- DC's version of Ant-Man because he shrinks or he's at least tiny. Uh-huh. And so there's keeps being this joke of like, he's trying to be like a regular superhero. Stop in the name of the great at and they just like step on him. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Again, we don't, we're not being reverent. So we are making just, you know, all those sort of things that especially non geek out fans would roll their eyes about superheroes. We are totally willing to touch on that. Mm. Like, <laughs> there is a doomsday device in this. Okay. That's because doomsday is an acronym for something. <laughs> that's a huge acronym. It is a really long acronym, but it's it's done by the movie director, and it's to uh, basically stream this movie onto cell phones and things. And she's like, in hindsight, yeah, we could have picked a better name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, but... <laughs> okay, in a, in a serious, you know, movie... You, that would totally be something else. But in this, we're just going to play on it. And they're very, like, even in serious moments when they're supposed to be fighting crime, it's just like, we have time to be ridiculous and silly because we are the Teen Titans. And none of us take anything seriously, including Raven, which really surprised me. Because from the little I knew about Raven, she seemed very sort of, like, droll in tone. Mm-hmm. But not to the point where she herself would make jokes. She would just be sort of sarcastic. But she's as in it and being stupid at times as the rest of them and uh-huh. i'm just like okay I, <laughs> she's just darkly right. sarcastic I, I, I guess yeah so i liked it for the most part i i definitely enjoyed it much more than i thought i would because again going in i was just like kids movie kids cartoon uh, i don't know about this but i liked the parts that i understood the parts that were aimed a bit more at kids obviously i was just like <laughs> part jokes poop jokes okay moving on <laughs> I thought that the humor was really good. I'm interested to see now the original Teen Titans because of the difference in animation Mm -hmm. style. This one is, I mean, they're superheroes, so automatically you're not supposed to be, you know, real. Uh, Cyborg's head can come off and his wires act as arms or something. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. But the original Teen Titans has a at least less cartoony animation style. I won't say more real because it's still clearly like comic-y. Right. But it's a less like we are completely cartoon characters and more like our body proportions are at least semi-realistic as opposed to we all seem to be about maybe two and a half feet tall. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'd be interested to see that, especially since I'm looking it up. It does seem that the shows dealt with a lot of really good themes along with also being irreverent about things. So this does, this movie did make me interested in at least the original TV shows. I don't know if there's going to be a sequel or more TV shows or where the TV shows currently are, because at least the first one's over, but Teen Titans Go might still be on. I'm not sure. So, That's a good question. I'm not sure either. Interested to check it out, but not like, oh my gosh, I immediately have to go and turn on the TV. Oh, funny, come on. Go turn not, on the TV. Funny, Do it for me. Not, right? Because you never... Because <laughs> Sarah's too busy cleaning closets, so somebody has to watch TV. Yes. Take one for the team, Stacey. I, I, will, I will try and do that. So we're going to take a short break. Stay tuned. 
Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Movie Podcast, where today we are talking about cartoons because we clearly miss our childhood and or Sarah just misses TV in general. <laughs> She's too busy cleaning. <laughs> I got to work on that. It really does. So our second film today is The Breadwinner, which is based off of a book, which I did not know hmm. until like the end of the movie, um, about a young girl in Afghanistan whose father is taken away and so she has to dress up as a boy in order to support her family mm -hmm. okay so when i first read the description for this i it read to me somehow as like this was a culturally accepted thing like that this was a thing that sometimes just happened mm -hmm. where hey there's no man in the family so you know the girl is still not clearly, you know, a grown woman. So she can dress up as a boy and be the breadwinner in the family. That's not the case. This is not like a thing that normally happens. Mm -hmm. This is a thing that she actually has to keep secret. Okay, sure. So, but going in, I was just, I was confused at first. I was like, so wait, what? <laughs> oh, oh, nobody knows? Because just somehow from the description, I thought it was a, a, just an accepted thing that just we kind of, and I think I was conflating it. There was a book I have where the girl takes a vow to remain a virgin and is allowed to then essentially act as a man so long as she remains a virgin. Mm. And so I think in my head they were conflating somehow. Right. Although this is Afghanistan, you said, right? So yes. I can't imagine it would be culturally accepted for a girl to dress up as a boy. Well, see, and this is what is the major frustrating part of this film for me, because you get this a number of times it's not clear what year it's supposed to be mm -hmm. but it's clearly supposed to be somewhat modern times because at some point there is a uh reference to cell phones okay so we have cell phones and the taliban so somewhere in that time frame at least you know most likely in my lifetime but then at the same time the people are clearly somewhat sheltered from the rest of the world because at one point the girl who I think her name is Parmona, although I kept hearing it as Pomona. Mm. And I was like, you're not saying that because that's a city. But what are you saying? Uh, Parvana, according to IMDb. Yes. Yeah, and it's 2001 is 2001. the year it's taking place. Okay. So. Yeah, because at one point when she's dressed up as a boy, she actually meets another girl who's also dressed up as a boy. And they have a conversation about, you know, what they do if they could leave this place. And the other girl wants to go to the sea. Because she's heard it's amazing, the moon pools the water, but she's never seen it. And hmm. I'm just like, so what you've never, like, even in a, I mean, I don't think we ever see a TV in this film at all, so it's not clear if anyone has a TV, but you've never seen, like, any sort of visual representation of the sea? What year is this? <laughs> like, you just mentioned cell phones, but at the same time, you're sounding like this is not anywhere in the past few decades. I don't understand. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, 2001, that makes a lot of sense because Parvana, Parvana? Uh, that's how it's spelled. Yeah, let me double it kept check that. sounding them. like Parvona. Yeah, Parvana. So Parvona, maybe, is what they're saying? Maybe. P-A-R-V-A-N-A, -A -A, so. Hmm. So anyways, uh, she, her father has lost his leg 
And he inadvertently insults some Taliban members. Oh, dear. And so they get him arrested for because the charges that are brought against him are that he has like immoral books and he's teaching women to read. Mm. And when they do bust into the house, he does have a book, but it's like a storybook telling, I think, stories of like their people's history so i don't think it's immoral but we don't really charge him anyways we just take him off to prison well yeah because he's teaching women to read well he was a school teacher so Mm -hmm. and we find out later that supposedly his wife was a writer though we never get any hint of that including even in the movie she has her oldest daughter write. she herself doesn't write so i'm not sure where that came up but you get the idea that this family is a little liberal-minded as a as uh, compared to, you know, the rest of the Afghani society where they live. The man who has charged her father was actually a former student of his. And he Mm. seems clearly very angry that, you know, life did not work out as well as he thought it would when he was a young, idealistic man. He's a very eager, I guess you'd say, Taliban member. Mm -hmm. And he uses that to sort of uses that power to do what he wants and you get a lot of time the women are not allowed out the house without a man Mm -hmm. and since parvona's father has been taken away the only other man in their family is their younger brother who's still a baby Mm -hmm. to the point that he does not even talk in proper sentences she keeps telling him a story about an elephant and he can't pronounce elephant properly right you can get what he's trying to say but it's just like elephant it's just like oh adorable but really not helping the situation right now So because their father has been arrested, they go at first to try and get him out of prison. But this actually does not end well. They get, um, I'm going to say attacked. They get stopped at first by, I think he must be a Taliban member. Mm -hmm. You kind of get this idea from the way this is done that the Taliban members are all those guys who are riding around in the back of trucks (laughs) and then get out and harass women who are outside without their husbands. Well, like I'm sure that's not completely inaccurate, but it's just like. That's the only kind of thing you never get. The only time you ever mention it is the, the former student specifically says he's a Taliban member and the rest you just sort of hinted at. So it's not clear which of the men are, which of the men aren't. But in this society, there's clearly certain things that we just don't have to say out loud to understand. Mm-hmm. So when their father's taken, Parvona at first still as a girl because she's still young enough that she can go outside and she's the one who has to go out and draw water. Her older sister is now too old to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's Parvona's job because she's still a girl, not a woman, I guess. Right. She goes out to the market to try and get food. And none of the food sellers will sell to her because you can't to a woman or something. Or they're not even supposed to talk to her. Right. I don't quite understand because obviously there's major cultural differences. There's a lot of rules also. Yes. So when she and her mother try and go to see her father in prison... That doesn't end well. Her mother ends up beaten. And this comes up a couple of times where they even try and explain, well, I'm out without my husband because my husband was arrested. Mm -hmm. And the guys who are yelling at them don't want to hear it. Don't come out without your husband, whatever. And so they get placed in this, you know, terrible rock versus hard place situation of, well, the man of the family (laughs) was arrested and is not here. And I have to be able to go out and get food and water but i can't go out without a man of the family what do i do Mm -hmm. Uh, parvona's sister is actually well kind of it's both parvona and her sister in different ways without saying it have the idea that parvona will go and dress as a boy and originally this is just supposed to be for a short time to get them food but then parvona finds she gets a lot of freedom Mm -hmm. because as a boy she's able to go out and do a bunch of stuff that as a girl she's not allowed to absolutely and so she continues to do this because a gives her freedom and b it gives her a way to earn money but then a war is coming Mm -hmm. and i was too young in 2001 to be paying attention to the news so i'm going to just go off the assumption that yes this actually happened (laughs) around this time in afghanistan i was not paying attention to the news at all i have no idea A war is coming, and Parvona's mother has written to a cousin to help her because her husband's in jail, and so the family gets somewhat split up. The cousin comes and wants to take the family away, but Parvona's not there because she's gone to the prison yet again to see her father, 
And so we're all struggling, you know, not to be split up and to find out what happened to each other in this world where not only do we not have cell phones, but we're like walking several miles just to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. The animation is interesting in this. At times it's, especially when she's telling the story, which is about an evil elephant king on a mountain and his jaguars who have stolen the seed of the village or something. Mm. I don't quite <laughs> <laughs> This is the story she's telling her baby brother. Yes. Yeah. Um that animation is a bit more less fluid and more jerky. Mm-hmm. But you're clearly supposed to be like, aha, now we're in the story. Okay, now we're back to real life. Mm-hmm. So that works. It's not like what the heck is going on? It's like, aha, I get we're in the story world versus the r- real world. Um but then at the end, I like the story part until the end. Because it shows up as sort of the main, last, almost climactic scene. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, okay, my suspension of disbelief is gone. Like, this story at this moment, I can't. I can't. With, I was with you hmm. for the most part when you were just telling this to the brother. But now what you're using this story for, I'm just like, really? At this moment? Really? Like, I get this is a terrible situation, but really? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying not to spoil it, but I was just like, <sighs> Okay. I want, I I want, I'm, I'm rooting for you. And at the same time, I can't believe that this is how this is going. So (laughs) I want you to do well, but I can't believe you're going to do well. Mm. And I can't believe you're going to do well in the method you're trying to do well in. Interesting. Yes. Yes. It It ends almost, it doesn't end. Like it ends, but it doesn't end. Mm -hmm. So at the end, I'm like, so wait, what happened to basically all those characters given the situation we ended in? Like and now I want I kind of want to go out and find the book just to, like I was just flip say to the, maybe you need to read the book. Well, I just want to flip to the end of the book <laughs> and see like so what happens to the end, what happens to these characters at the end? Is there an ending in the book? Because you end well, she you know gets to a certain point where it's like okay we could stop here. We don't fully know what's going to happen to these characters like a minute after this, but we're at a part where we feel somewhat resolved about most of the characters we've seen in this film, although I still have major questions about some of the side characters, even at the very moment we end. But I was like, I can see why Angelina Jolie would be an executive producer on this film. Yeah. If I it makes see- you feel any better, this hmm. is the first, the the breadwinner is the first in a series of books. Oh, okay. So that may be why it ended feeling very unsettled. Yeah, because it definitely did feel like you know, as since we have this whole metaphor of telling a story, it's like, so you're going to tell me some more tomorrow, right? <laughs> it's like, a- this, we have to go to bed now, but you're going to continue. It felt like that. I was like, so we're going to continue this tomorrow? No, the movie. In- okay, fine. There's four books in the series. Uh-huh. That makes a bit more sense. So yeah, I liked it pretty well. The animation is a little offsetting for me. So for example, because they're in Afghanistan, all of the fully adult men have well i shouldn't say all a number of the fully adult men have like beards and or mustaches which they need to have to under taliban law yes but the way the animation style is done the mustaches look like they're coming out of the nose nostrils (laughs) as opposed to an actual mustache and that was just like off-putting for me every time i saw it um again the story animation is a bit more jerky but it's supposed to be so that worked pretty okay but then for the rest of it it did actually seem somewhat believable like you don't get you know in the way you did like especially with teen titans because it's a superhero where they're running at like ridiculous speeds because they're a cartoon right like they're set they're done in a way that they seem their movements seem pretty realistic it's just their actual appearance is a little strange because your mustache is distracting. It, it, I am looking at pictures now. It does kind of look like the mustache is coming out of his nose. It does, yes. Interesting. But overall, I liked it. I'm just upset that it ended and I have to go to bed. <laughs> just five more minutes. Right? Just one more chapter, please. <laughs> I never actually... I'm sure my mother did read to me, but I could read at an early age and I was always like, I can do it myself. <laughs> so I read to myself and I don't actually have any memories of being like, please, mom, please. But yeah, this felt like that. Oh, please, mom, please, just finish a story. Just one more, one more chapter, one more one more five more minutes, something. One more time with the storybook, as parents evidently sometimes complain of the child <laughs> wants the storybook over and over again. Well, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they do any other books in the series as movies. It would, yeah. I'm not quite sure. 
like what the original um, distribution for this film was. Mm-hmm. I, I don't remember seeing a trailer for it. I haven't. So I don't know if it actually appeared in theaters or if it was just... A pro- I can understand why Angelina Jolie would produce it. Mm-hmm. It definitely seems like a project she'd be interested in, given the different uh, philanthropic things she's done. Right. Um, but yeah, so it'd be interesting to see if they do continue the story. And again, I just kind of just want to now flip to maybe the end of the fourth book or something. <laughs> How does this end? Cheater. Why do you have an ending? I, I, I don't normally do that, but I really want to do it for this movie. Slash book, slash whatever. Well, it is an Academy Award nominee for Best Animated Feature. Or- I can I can totally believe that as well. Mm-hmm. I absolutely can. Yes. So on that note, we're going to end for today. Thank you for listening to the GSMC Movie Podcast. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program